Good afternoon. This is your Pan-African show called Africa and your host, Kazala Seifu. Today we've chosen to take you into the wellness world. And this is a different show for all of us. You haven't seen us doing anything in the wellness <laughs> area. So I'm really excited about our guest today. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Could you please introduce yourself? Um, I have many names. My name is Zochi um, in, um, in Ethiopia. They call me Tegan. So either or other names. Uh, I am the co-founder and wellness architect of a, an organization called Tenesu. And we focus on wellness in a 300 and, holistic 360 degree. So we'll talk more about that approach to wellness versus um, the approach of just being fit. Right, <laughs> <laughs> which are very different. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to take you back mm -hmm. to your childhood, school, family, growing up, uh, just so we know how you gradually got into the wellness mm -hmm. sector. So if you don't mind just telling us a little bit about your background. Oh, well, let's see, I was born in Detroit and my parents were from St. Louis. Uh, and, that, and I used that as the, the introduction because through my grandmother, actually, is how I was first introduced to wellness. Because my, you know, I spent a lot of time with my grandmother and she was a really wise woman. And she uh, started off with just finding out who I was. Okay. Right. And then um, I had this great interest of how do I, with the question of how do we evolve? Right. right. And so she helped me through that process of what was evolution and what were the things I was looking at. And so um, then from there, I, you know, I moved to uh, California, went to school there. My parents thought I was going to be an architect. I thought I was going to be an architect <laughs> <laughs> because they told me I was going to be an architect. But in the, also in that process, I started studying martial arts on a more of a professional level. And so I studied Tai Chi, I studied Shaolin, I studied all these arts and but one thing theme that my teachers would tell me, the skills that you learn physically must be translated over to healing, right? right? So it's like, uh, yes, you can learn how to kill, mm -hmm. but you have to also learn how to heal. Okay. Mm -hmm. So having that balance. And so uh, after a while, you know, sometimes when you do certain things like the the, uh, you get in the habit and you get bored with them. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I made, uh, in say 1982, 84, somewhere around there, I made a switch. I switched from more, from an external martial art to a more internal. So I started doing Tai Chi, Bagua, Xing Yi. And I had, fortunately, I had one of the best teachers in the world at the time uh, in Hawaii. Uh, Dr. Pang, uh, I met Dr. Pang through, um, I was in Hawaii, uh, I volunteered my time in the library, and the librarian studied Tai Chi. So in the <laughs> evening, I would go there, we'd straighten up all the books, and in the evening, we would mm -hmm. practice Tai Chi. So that's really my introduction to Tai Chi, the principles and practices and so forth and so on. And um, that journey has got me to this point. And then being African mm -hmm. in nature, it was very important if I was going to be in Africa to not take a template from, say, Chinese template and put it over, but to really look historically and look at what was African in what I was doing and then bringing out that where people are not looking outside of themselves mm -hmm. and saying, oh, I'm going to do this in, uh, or I'm going to dress up like a Chinese person and I'm going to practice. I mean, that happens. Um, but I, you know, I really wanted to just really sink and say, these principles are ours. And they, um, there's a whole holistic 
uh, process and medicine that we really need to explore our indigenous roots and our spirituality. Okay. So through that, then it just took me through five years being on, on the continent to just really doing the research and really finding, you kind of know what you want to do, but you got to really find the niches and find the resources to really touch into uh, what does that mean by healing, right? Mm -hmm. And having those conversations. So this is how I am. Yeah, this is I am. well, you pretty much covered uh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll break them down. Yes. So, of course, my next question was, so who is Zochi Young? How did you get the name Tagain? And the name Tagain came before or after you came to Ethiopia? Okay, let's, um, <laughs> hmm, we'll start from Zochi. Yes. <laughs> so, um, Zochi actually is my Dharma name. I spent five years in a meditation okay. center. And so the name means hidden wisdom. Okay. And so I really was attracted to that because if I look at ancient Egypt, uh, Amon is the hidden one. Mm -hmm. So I kind of knitted that thread together and say, okay, I can live with this. And uh, when I got to uh, Ethiopia, a friend of mine uh, said, well, you have to have an Ethiopian name. And so we went through various, well, they went through various renditions of the name. <laughs> I actually liked one better than the other, but I didn't get the one that I liked. So <laughs> I got the name Tagen. And so, which means, for those people who don't understand, which means one who's been found. And so, you know, I had to think about that for a minute, you know, one who has been found. Uh, and then I actually kind of put my own spin on it is one who has found oneself right. as well <laughs> as being found. Right. So, um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much how I got the name and, you know, where, you know, where it comes from. And then, you know, one of my students in California, uh, I was teaching at an institution and they were doing marketing for me. And so I'm teaching Tai Chi. And so they said, Tai Chi with Zochi. And so then it just like <laughs> stuck. And so uh, it was like, okay, that's a no-brainer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I got. So beautiful. So you are a master teacher. Yes. An artivist, healer, author, founder of the wellness architect of Tennessee, including a few black belts. Yes, few, yeah. Just a few. Yeah. How did you get exposed to wellness practices? and martial arts and what is embodied arts okay in the beginning you did mention how you got into them but now mm -hmm. we're going to a little bit more detail yes wellness like i said before through my grandmother and other experiences living in hawaii actually living all over the world understanding the practices of wellness but what was really the 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 key to lock, unlock the door is looking around me and seeing so many people that I knew and love that needed wellness, mm. right? Uh, and not just the wellness of being physically fit, you know, go to the gym and so forth, but they were having problems communicating, mental problems, mm. financial problems, community problems, environmental problems, and all of that is wellness from a holistic approach. So if you're living in a, an environment that's not holistic or not well, then how can you be well? Right. If you're in a job that the environment is toxic, you can't be well. Mm -hmm. You don't have the right community that supports you. Then you can't be well. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't get the need. You know, it's like we, in today's society, we live in a, a approximate communities. So when we get in the community, we shake hands, we laugh, we have fun. But really what we need in wellness is that support when we're not in those communities. So how do we support ourselves? Mm -hmm. And so uh, it really, you know, initially I talked to several people and people were thinking about wellness in a, in a narrow frame, like, we'll, go to, well, you could make a, a wellness clinic, right? And then people could go there like hospitals. Mm. And I'm like, oh, that's not me. And that's not total wellness. You yeah. know, some of that, that uh, 
stuff is sickness. We were treating sickness. And I was more interested in the, the question underneath the question is how do we evolve, right? How do we get to the place that we are collectively conscious and that we can evolve beyond where we're at? Because I was looking at history and we're kind of repeating ourselves over and over again. So, you know, I've seen, you know, people say, well, financial is the, the answer and this is the answer and that is the answer. And I'm like, no, because we're still sick. Right. We're still sick. We're infected. And until we come to the realization that we need to really focus, infuse wellness in every piece of our life. Right. Every decision should start off. Is this well? Right. We build a building. Is it well? We make decisions on workplace and so forth. So forth. Is it well? Mm -hmm. Right. So that really is like, OK, this is definitely the string to pull, to weave into the society overall and creating this holistic wellness approach in everything. So then looking at how could this happen? And then, you know, it's like, I, first thing I looked at is, I looked at Nguza Sava, the seven principles of Kwanzaa. And I looked and I looked and I said, you know, you can't have unity without wellness, right? You, you can't have collective work and res responsibility without wellness because we have to trust each other. Mm -hmm. So I took wellness in a, a totally different spiral mm -hmm. to say, Oh, in order to all these principles that we talk about and the vision that we have, if we don't put wellness in front of it, we never have it. We'll always have the same controversy over and over and over again, repeating ourselves like a record. So what is embodied arts? Embodiment is actually we practice physical arts like Tai Chi, meditation, yoga, um, Qigong and so forth and so on, as an embodied entry to our consciousness. Okay. Right? So, uh, for example, in Taiji, and I pronounce it different than most people are used to hearing it because uh, the Europeans wrote it Tai Chi yeah. because they couldn't hear the zh. Uh. So it's Taiji. <laughs> oh. and, and it just gives a, a whole different meaning. It does. Because you know, Qi which just starts with a Q, actually means energy, mm. right? Tai Chi represents the entire universe, right? And so you can relate the word Tai Chi to Nun in ancient comedic wisdom. In fact, the stories are the same as far as creation, okay. right? You know, you have the emptiness of Nun, you had the emptiness in the, the Chinese story, and then you had Tai Chi. And Tai Chi is actually two polar opposites, positive and negative, right? Comedic, you have the same thing in a different way, yeah. but the, the same thing, these two polar opposites, masculine and feminine, okay. always impaired, right? Not opposites but complementary. Right, like right? The yin and yang. Yes, exactly. So uh, these embodied practices help you tap into your consciousness by the physical practice of it. So for example, listening. Uh, at an advanced level of Tai Chi, there's an a art called um, uh, sensing hands. And sensing hand is the two people who are touching each other. Um, respectfully, and uh, they are listening to each other by touch. Wow. Right? And so that exercise eventually teaches them to have empathy mm. and uh, also being able to hear someone even when they're under pressure, how to manage in your body and mind uh, something is happening, maybe it's a, a gr someone being aggressive, uh, maybe you're having one of those difficult conversations, but you can still find quietness in yourself and able to listen. And not just listen to the words, but listen underneath to what the person is saying, right? What is the, what is the purpose of the purpose? 
you know, is, is really, how, you know, it's like you and I may have a disagreement, but we may have the same purpose in mind, right? right? And so we have to get under that. If we can uh, find that one key <laughs> that we agree that we're looking for the best interests of people, then we can say, okay, let's revisit that. Well, now we know what we're agreeing on. This is what we agree on. We just have different sides of the coin. And maybe, maybe it's somatics that we're not hearing each other. So, I mean, that's one of the beautiful parts of um, these embodied or somatic arts, uh, body arts, is that if, if with the right instruction, the right uh, format, then you actually get to tap in. The teacher actually leads you to tapping into yourself and unlocking the door. So that's, in a nutshell, what embodied well, arts is. Brilliant. So I'm going to take you to your wellness center mm -hmm. and I'm going to ask you why you chose to actually open a wellness center in Africa. And Mm -hmm. Because the name of your wellness center is actually very cool. And I'd like to know how you actually got to choose that name. How, from where did you come to get to Tanasu? <laughs> okay, I mean, that's a... I'm sure it was a journey. No, it was a journey. I was actually teaching Aikido in Ethiopia, down in Hawassa. And uh, I had made several trips back and forth in two years. And then I came to Addis and start having uh, conversations. And I was telling a couple of elders and young folks that about my vision of Tanesu, or at the time, it was a wellness mm -hmm. community. And um, they would say, well, why are you going there? We need this. Mm. And, you know, over a period of time, doing the research, I said, okay, fine. Uh, but... I don't think a lot of people understood the scope mm. of what now Tanesu is going to look like. So I wanted um, Tanesu to, one, have five locations starting off all over the, uh, the continent of Africa, Ethiopia, Kenya, South Africa, Nigeria, and Ghana. And these wellness centers uh, are also educational centers, uh, uh, lecture centers, event centers. And I want them, after you know, being a project manager and event manager, I wanted these places to be monolithic mm -hmm. in size and scope. I wanted you to walk into the building and immediately feel healed or walk onto the compound and feel the healing. So, I mean, it's a large vision. It's a beautiful it's, vision. It's a large <laughs> vision. And I thought it was necessary for two factors. One, for people on the continent to have such a place that they could go and they could learn wellness skills and create cottage industries. And then two, for people, the Africans that live in the diaspora, and I felt that you can't do healing in the same place that is making you sick, uh -huh. right? So you need to create environments outside of that where you can have those conversations in safe places and spaces that you can do the healing and, and, and actually explore yourself because that's where the healing begins, mm -hmm. right? So to recognize why are you feeling so angry, right? Why, you know, why are, are you having these chronic illnesses? It's because of the stress, the environment, um, all of this continues to keep us sick, right? And we, you know, our medical profession, I, mean, I want to say traditional, but the current medical condition that every five falls to is a sick industry. So they only treat the, 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 the limbs of the sickness and not the trunk. And so these places would give you an opportunity to explore that and bringing in indigenous medicine and having workshops. Right now I have a group of acupuncturists that want to come to Ethiopia for free, teach people acupuncture 
and actually do some healing with acupuncture. So it's like that's the perfect combination is like introducing uh, alternative methods of healing, working along the contemporary format as well. Exactly. So, you know, that's about Tenesu and what it's going to be. Uh, and so what my strategy right now is introducing programs. So we have Women Empowered, uh, which is a program of self-care and self-defense. So it's, a, again, introducing those communication skills, breaking down the barriers of um, what I call pseudo traditions that, you know, we adapt to and we, that really don't have any place in the society and being able to let go of those things and realizing what is real and what is not. And just a, a, it's a month long program so people can actually practice and be in situations where they can then go out in the world and, and they feel more comfortable with those practices. And so the name of Tenesu sprung out of you know, I was kind of toying with the idea, many ideas, and I said, rise. And it was, you know, it, rise just didn't have it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I went through, a, I don't know, about a thousand names. And when I got to Ethiopia, just Tenesu, mm -hmm. it not only meant rise, but it meant awaken. Okay. And those two, you can't rise until you awake. So I said, okay, <laughs> this, is, this is it. <laughs> this is the word that I want to represent because that it, underneath it, like I said, infusing wellness into society as in everything means that we have to awaken and then rise, right? We can't say we're going to solve this problem with women and children, eradicating violence with women and children until it's infused in the entire society. You know, we have to change the paradigm of how we solve problems like their limbs and, and not treating the whole tree, right? So we have to be arborists in a sense to actually <laughs> take care of ourselves and our community because we're in, all interconnected, right? And we are. I don't think uh, a lot of us think we are. Right. But we are so, so connected. Right. And, and I also go back to what my grandmother would tell me, and then later on reading the ancients, is that we're spiritual beings in a human experience. Right. All right. In fact, we are rebirthing ourselves until we get it right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, again, Tenesu, to rise and awaken, is the whole question of evolution, who we are, and bringing wellness in front of all of that, so we can. You mentioned uh, Taiji. Taiji, yeah. And I noticed you've come up with your own uh, term or teaching. So I read that you teach Taiji Africa. Yes. So I'd like to know what you meant by that. Through study, mm -hmm. um, form is form. Right. right. I'm not going to try to change that and say, I yeah. created this. <laughs> but what I came up with, because of my background, you know, in the martial arts, it was like, everybody's trying to be Bruce Lee. Mm -hmm. Everybody's trying to use their martial art, and they imagine themselves to be on MMA. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's not who I am. That's not what I want to create. And not everybody's going to get there. That's in their imagination. It's a delusion. Yeah. Right. So what do people actually need? So I started working with uh, um, uh, art called Mu Yi uh, that I learned from um, initially my Zen teacher, Angel Kido Williams, and then later on from her teacher. Um, and then I started to notice some patterns, and then I started adding affirmations to the movement. So if you know anything about Tai Chi, you might hear the crane waves its wings, right? Or brush the horse's mane, right? You'll hear these terms, and they were important during the time they were created because people were closer to nature, so they understood what that meant, you know? And so it not only was it an 
explaining how to move, but it was actually referring to nature, the softness of nature, crane waves his wings, or brushing hand, uh, like I said, brushing the horse's mane, right? Or a needle to the bottom of the sea. All of those were ref referring to things in nature. A needle to the bottom of the sea is fishing, mm. right? The needle goes in, there's a, a game that is played, and then you come out. So um, I didn't think that worked for contemporaries, mm. right? It didn't have the value that it had there. So I started with intention. Mm. So the, one of the first moves in, that I worked on is looking at the movements themselves and, and, and asking them the movements. What does that feel like? What is being said? And so like the first introduction movement is making an invitation to the universe for what we want into the world. So that's something that you could easily step into. Mm -hmm. And then the, after you've made the invitation, it's moving obstacles out of the way. That's our work, right? We know what the work is, the obstacles are, and we can deepen into that. And then in the embodied movement, we can actually feel whatever that is, a messy desk, a bad relationship, uh, procrastination, move it out of the way. And then the third initial movement is look back and get. So Sankofa, reaching back to our ancestors, gaining their support and their wisdom and bringing it back into the present moment, mm -hmm. right? And you know, just taking that and then uh, depending where I'm at, like I'm in Kenya, taking it and putting it in Swahili. So we're no longer talking terms of Chinese or Japanese. Mm -hmm. Respectfully, those are great arts, but they came from a cultural reference. Right. And so if I'm going to teach something, it's still t to Africans, it has to have African cultural reference and not in someone else's cultural reference. And so uh, that's how the art evolved. Uh, Mu'i means fearless. And so uh, its origin, uh, the teacher that originally or, uh, created was a, a Zen monk in Hawaii. And um, he was noticing that the students would fall asleep during meditation. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to teach traditional Tai Chi, but Tai Chi wasn't the focus. It was just a practice. So he simplified 108 movements to 10 movements, right? And then Roshi uh, Norma Wong, who worked prior to becoming a Roshi, was working in, um, in politics and government and really was heavily involved in social issues of the people. And so she took that and then added it into her pack of tools uh, which she called Leaning Forward, and was designed primarily for women, the philosophy she had. And so Rosie is a, a Zen priest, or okay. priestess. Um, and so uh, studying from her, there is a tradition within most of the Chinese, Japanese, and African arts that you didn't just learn that art. You had to learn other humanities. So like flower arrangement, Mm, right. I like And <laughs> so you got more familiar with flowers. And even in the flower arrangement, in Chinese flower arrangement, it's arranged by earth, human, and heaven. Mm. So again, you ha you're practicing those principles, mm. even in you're doing the flower arrangement. And then when I did start doing some research on Kemet and African schooling, Again, I saw this theme of practicing humanities, mm. math, and culture, understanding nature. So the art itself is more than, you know, it's, Taiji is an, an, a door, right. right? And then from there we expand, we, under, we get to understand medicine, writing, mathematics, and so forth and so on from this apparently narrow lens, right? So uh, taking all of that together, that's how I 
uh, started teaching a more African-centric perspective. And then with the help of uh, teachers like Dr. Wade Noble, who's uh, a psychiatrist and has written several books. And then uh, the assistance of uh, Dr. Malefe, who's a historian who's created an Afrocentric uh, program to teach teachers to be more Afrocentric in their, in their approach. So taking you know, those type of scholars, putting it together, and then saying, okay, this can be more. Again, how can we rise? How can we evolve? Is always the question and with, with wellness. So you are a qualified teacher, mm -hmm. a practitioner of uh, Tai Chi and Qigong. Can you tell us the benefits of these practices? Ah, there are many benefits. Um, starting, say, from the elders. Um, I'm going to reverse my... <laughs> from the elders. It, prevention of, of falling. Okay. Also, the uh, focus the ability to focus and set one's intentions. is an, These are excellent arts. To how my teacher would say, the whole idea of Tai Chi and Qigong is to return to our natural state. So uh, moving from our habitual state back to our natural state. So that in itself is healing, you know, it's like, um, improving our, how we walk, our structure, uh, improving uh, recovery from heart disease, Alzheimer's, can't think of all the diseases, but there are, the research is coming out more and more with the practice of these embodied practices, in particular Tai Chi, they are more helpful for you. And just, you know, like for those athletes, they want to go out there and you know, they go out and they work out and they do something really fast and then they injure and they find themselves. It also helps for the recovery, but also Tai Chi, the reason why it's done slow and fast is that it allows you to understand how the body works. I have uh, sinus problems. It helps me regulate when I'm going through those things regulate my breathing. Okay. And so it also helps support your immune system. So it has a plethora <laughs> of ways that we can uh, improve our quality. You just pick and say, I have this. And we go, <laughs> okay, yes, we can help you with that. It's not, you know, it's not the, so the thing about um, the, this particular indigenous practice, it requires patience and time, right? I, I kind of like Tai Chi in the 1965, or, or I think it was in the 1960s, um, really came to light during the Chinese Revolution, right? Uh, when Mao Zedong came. And what they did is they reduced the number of steps, and they got all the teachers together, and they created an international 24 movement. Mm -hmm. And that was prerequisite for you getting health care. <laughs> I like that. It, it was uh, definitely uh, you know, a prerequisite. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's that you know, doing something for yourself mm -hmm. to help yourself, and then if things mm -hmm. go, then you can get your herbal medicines. So even if you look at the Chinese... <laughs> Scope of things is first, let's do the embodied practice. Mm. Then let's do herbs. Then let's do acupuncture. And if those three things haven't started, then we'll look at some conventional medicine. Mm. But each one has its place. And that's one of the things that is embodied in Tai Chi. Even the principles of acupuncture and herbology are actually part of its whole mm -hmm. cosmic circle. So it's not just the, it's like, I would like to say, it's like, in a way, like yoga. So, which I always say yoga and Tai Chi are the same thing if we understand the meaning of the word. So for those who don't understand the meaning of the word, it just means pulling together mind, body, and spirit, right? So yoking or 
is building the mind, body, and spirit. So any practice that works on the mind, body, and spirit is yoga. But the modern interpretation of yoga is asana, which is a physical movement, right? And so I always hear somebody says, yeah, I just got finished from yoga. And I'm like, uh, you mean you did asana practice? <laughs> And, you know, so uh, I, I digress a little bit, but <laughs> Tai Chi is an asana practice with an, an intentional component, right? So the two words that you hear in Tai Chi the most is relax, 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 mm -hmm. right? And then the next word is intention, bringing your intention to the practice. In fact, one of my practices are, when I get new students is, what is your intention that is inclusive of oneself and greater than oneself, right? So you bring that intention to the practice, like one of my elder students says, uh, my intention is to improve my health so I can spend time with my grandchildren and so forth and see them to grow up. As simple as that, that one intention moves you forward, right. you know, that gives you patience because you can see the other end, <laughs> right? Versus, oh, I'm going to get my body together, <laughs> right? And after a while, that's, yeah, it's not going to work. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, having an intention that is, that is inclusive of oneself and greater than oneself is really important into the practice. And you can take that same thing into any art form and say, what, it's like doing this television show. What is my intention, right? It is, you know, it's, it's not just having a television show. Okay. It's educating people to make them more aware of uh, things that they weren't aware of. And through that education, they have a better lens on improving their life. So intention, those two things are really, really important into the practice. Brilliant. Now, I've also found out that you've co-authored a book. Mm -hmm.